Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing uh, a big job. At least it seems like a big job. I hope it won't be too hard of a job. But we're going to be doing the radiator and both heater cores on a Chevy Suburban. It's the 88 to, I don't know, maybe all the way to 98 or 99. And the Suburbans, it might even be all the way to 2000 or 2001. Um, I don't know, not 100% sure. But these are the part numbers, at least from AutoZone, for the radiator. Now this is the big guy. Uh, we'll get back to that. And then this is the front uh, or the rear, one of these. I'm not sure, I don't remember anymore. One of these is the front radiator, which I think is a uh, heater core, which I think is this one. And that's the rear heater core. I don't know why the part numbers crossed out. But those are the part numbers that you'll find at AutoZone. Now, I got the big guy in my Suburban, which is the biggest one they have to offer. It's the 34 inches wide with the oil coolers on both sides. Now, the oil coolers are these things here. If you don't have those, you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave the little red plugs that come in them. Nothing's going to leak. They're just dust covers. But on this side of the radiator, driver's side, you got your engine oil cooler lines. You may or may not have these. I believe this is a four-wheel drive only option. Uh, but having said that, those lines run all the way under the block over to the oil filter down there. But having said that, they're only for four-wheel drive. You can put this on your two-wheel drive. It, and, uh, you know, add an extra quart for the capacity and you can have an engine oil cooler hooked up. And on this side, the passenger side, uh, you got your transmission cooler lines, top and bottom one there. Um, you're just going to want to throw like a quick plug over these when you undo them, because uh, they will leak. Now I did a quick degreasing, that's why everything's kind of wet right now, but I've got a lot of leaking from the power steering over here on this side and the oil cooler lines on this side. So I just wanted to clean that up a little bit before I started messing around inside there. So we're going to start by removing all three items. First the uh, front radiator and then we'll move to the front heater core in the passenger side uh, floorboard or just under the dash there. And then the rear heater core if you have that option is in the back fender well underneath that back window it's a, it's above the fender well in that back window so start with the easiest first and then when i get all those removed i'll do a quick flush of everything with a garden hose and uh, i've only got water in here so i don't got to worry about anything on the ground just some rusty bits but you're going to start by draining it with that right down there that white piece right there it's broken on mine. So I'm going to have to go to the other side and remove the bottom hose. Then I'll remove this hose. Um, let it drain. Unhook the heater core lines from somewhere. There's one here. And there's one in the back over there. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. That never turns out good. After you remove the top hose, you can take the 10 mil and remove all the bolts holding in the shroud. And then there's going to be two there and two there. And we get this top half out of our way. Also pay attention to these two clips here. This is the vacuum line for one of your vacuum lines for your vapor canister. And then you got the vent tube for your front differential. Mm -hmm, the heck? Well, that works. I should be able to... I think that's all we got. Yeah, come on up here. Oh, yeah. Voila. So to get the lines off, you're going to want to use a flare nut wrench, which is that kind of wrench. It's got just a big enough opening to slide over whatever line 
And now the uh, passenger side here, transmission lines, are a half inch. And for whatever reason, the driver's side lines are a 20 millimeter. So I already broke that one loose. Slide it off of there. Yeah, 20 millimeter. And uh, break that one loose. Yeah. So we'll get those lines unscrewed and then we can yank this radiator out. And last but not least, before we remove these two top mounts, is these lines here. Let's see. This one, I hate these clamps. Oh, that's not gonna work. So you're going to want to find something to plug those tranny lines, like I said, and I zip tied the bottom one out of the way, just, just to keep it out of the way, because I'm also dragging up this bottom hose with it, because um, I don't want to mess with that down there, that clamp way down there. I'll switch it later, change up the hose clamp. Uh, I disconnected it there at that end earlier. did all this without removing that bottom half of the shroud. Those bottom lines are a little tricky to get to, um, but you can get to them just by peeling this back of hair. Yeah, that hose is going to give me trouble. I'm going to need two hands. Oh. Alright, so I removed some stuff to uh, just make it easier to get to the heater core hoses. And I did try to back flush it a little bit with a garden hose. Um, but man, there was so much pressure that it wouldn't go in. And it was just barely peeing out that. So there's a clog in the system. Yeah. But first step to getting the heater core out is to reach down in here and get these hose clamps off. I've got these long pliers. I'm just going to wiggle them back like that. And we'll do, can I do the other one that easy? Gosh, that was so easy. I'm surprised. Oh, that hurt my fa- Ow, oh. Ow, I don't know what that was about. So, yeah. It's pretty nasty. Well, it was all brown. Let me see if... I don't know if it's this was plugged. Hang on. So I back flushed it and it actually flowed pretty well out of the uh, heater core itself, out of the firewall there where you just saw a drip. So then I put the hose to this to flush it the opposite direction there. And it was barely coming out here again. So there is a clog there. But again, you know, that opening is just really small in there. The way the fitting and the O-rings are in there. Sometimes there's a screen with like this piece of plastic running right through the center. But I'm going to take this off real quick. It's just a Phillips screw. And then you should be able to wiggle those white clips in and, and wiggle that out real quick. Just so I can take a peek at it. Well, it doesn't look clogged. But man, it's nasty. I don't know, I'm afraid to get in there and pick it out. I might break it. I got both hoses off now. I just need to go to the inside. And there is a lot to do. You can see why I'm changing the heater core. Nice leak there. So, you know, and I'm just curious. I'm going to see what happens when I undo all of these bolts on the bottom here. Like, uh, you know those ones and those ones that are missing already oh cool 
I feel like that's a lid. Let's see what happens. Well, that practically wants to fall out. I think. I think there's more. Hang on. I think there's some in the middle, maybe. And and I got that out. So that bolt right there is hard to get to. Just so you know, you want to make sure you got the right, the perfect size extension and socket combo. Now. And you can see here my evidence of leaking. So let's see if we can just. Oh, that's right. There's another bolt holding it in up there. Okay. Got the old one out. That's pretty nasty. Pretty rusty. You know what I'm starting to wonder? Is where the back, if I even have rear heating. Because I don't see where the heater lines are coming from. So, that's going to be something for tomorrow. Um, I think that's going to be it for tonight. In the morning, we'll slap in the new one. Okay, update. It's the next day, and my flash is on. And now it's off. Okay. So, we've got uh, the core pulled out of the bottom. We realized I did all this for nothing. Um, and then, while I was doing that, and well, actually while I was tearing apart the back as well to see if I had anything back there. It's just an AC, you know, condenser or whatever you call it. But uh, there's no heater core and I have no heater lines running to the back. So I'll put this back together while... Uh, but while I was taking that apart, I had Mike last night taking apart the stereo stuff. See that read? That equalizer's gone. The radio is out of here. And there's a piece that went underneath. Let's see. Yeah, right next to the motor, you can see that metal bracket with the tiny hole in the center. Went up to that hole there. And it held this stuff here. It held this stuff here. That was the box that was bolted underneath right next to that blower motor, or, um, I mean, blend door actuator. And then this is the equalizer that was attached to it, the control panel that was all attached to this. So I took all three pieces out, and uh, since there was a whole lot of room, I decided to replace that blower motor as well. It appeared to be the same pins. Uh, so I went ahead and replaced it. If that doesn't solve all our problems, then I will replace this third blower motor down there. Wherever that's at, I can't see it at the moment. But uh, while I'm putting everything back together, the back of that back together, and putting the heater core back in, I'm gonna have AJ cut out. Where's it at? Oh, here it is. Do not drop this. I dropped it, and it's like bent. right. Yeah, it's thin metal. It's very easy to bend. But uh, since we've got a, we're going to put a new stereo in, obviously, and we've got a shallow stereo, so you don't need the installation kit that has the big raised area. Um, I'll show you here in my truck. So you can see here, it's raised. It sticks it out this whole bit here and narrows it up for the right size. Um, but because at the same time that's necessary to bring it out because it's a full depth CD player and the back of that isn't deep enough to handle one of those. But the stereo I'm using is only like, you know, a half depth. It's just a, they call it a media receiver. It doesn't do CDs. So, and I already checked. Actually, I'll show you. <coughs> 
there's plenty deep enough to fall in there. So, so we just got to carve this out a little bit. Let me see that real quick. Because this isn't quite big enough. So he's going to carve that out right to that recess there, that line. And then I've got some black ABS. We'll make a, a frame for the back of it that fills in this square. And I am going to shove it all the way over towards the driver and just have a black space here. Maybe I can put a button or something there later. So here's my pieces of black plastic. I just need to scrub it up and make it clean. Um, but then we'll cut a frame out of this with a panel that covers that hole. And I'm going to leave this for AJ. This will be AJ's project while I button up the uh, <laughs> while I button up the rest of the heating stuff. And I'll get to return one of these since I don't have rear heating. I'll be returning that guy. So check this out. The new one's on top, the old one's on bottom. I don't know if the old one was an original piece or not. But on the old one, the whole pipe was actually larger in diameter. On the new one, they just flared the end. But both of these are the same diameter, unlike the old one. All right, so it's gonna go in in this direction, in this orientation. You can see there's two holes there. And then the rest of the body will lay up in there and it'll be held in with this clip and screw right there. Uh, since obviously I probably won't be able to do that with one hand. I'm gonna to sit you guys down. I got that in there hanging through and I just pop on this cover here clean it out a little bit there, there we go there, perfect. Just, um, try to remember how that goes back in there without hurting the heater core My heater core's in, just got to throw the screws in real quick. Now, I did end up having to kind of pull the bottom of the heater core back out a little bit. Just pull the lines back this way a little. To get the tray tucked under the heater core first, on the other side of the heater core first. And then kind of, um, and then tuck them both up in there at the same time. Wiggle it a little bit, but the lines... Heater core is still fastened and the lines are still poking through and the cover is in place. Um, so I just gotta put the screws in there and um, put the face plate back on the dash. I took that off to get the stereo, that stereo stuff. And button all this together yeah, just a mess, just, just a mess. In the meantime, AJ has been working on that faceplate. Okay, that one's like on the line. On the line, We that's fine, we're going to take the line. Mm -hmm. Just don't go past the line. And then, uh, then we get to put the radiator in still. Sorry it's taken so long, but I'm learning as I go with this thing. I had to tear everything apart just to find out I don't have rear heating. And to be fair, it just says rear AC control, not rear heating. So... And the lines that come out underneath are, you know, they're AC lines for sure. Ouch. Those are AC lines and then they hard line all the way to the front. 
because they got those two, those two same hard lines. Right there. See a large one and a skinny one coming from underneath the truck. And if we follow it, it's an AC line. So the heater lines, it would have to tee off here and go under the truck. There would be two plastic tees, I imagine, with more lines going underneath. But I don't have those, so. Um, moving on to the radiator. Got it all buttoned up. Everything's put back together. Uh, the vent's on. I even got this bolted down. It wasn't bolted in at the bottom before, so that's better than it was. Got everything cleaned up back there. That's all put back together. Um, so... And we got this finished. AJ finished that up. So that's installed. Nice and solid. You know. Um, it also sits on that metal brace that was back there. So it's it's supported. It's not going to be jumping around. I still have this hole here. Which I'll take the cubby from the black truck. And throw that in here. Because I have other plans for this area with the black truck. So, and as far as did it work, well, I still haven't put the radiator in yet or got cooling in it, so uh, there's no nothing flowing through it. But the controls, because we ended up replacing the one on this side, right next to where the old radio unit used to be, instead of replacing that one, because I put my finger on the outside of the plastic and... That's for the recirculation when you hit max. You know, some cars have like the fresh air signal or the recirculation signal. That's what that's what that is. And that's what that motor does underneath there. And that works when I hit that button on and off. I can feel that motor spinning on and spinning off. Um, this one, the temperature is the motor that's right behind the radio right here. That is still working. You can visibly see that one working back and forth. I knew that one worked because after I replaced that one, I was able to get uh, hot and cold temperatures when I couldn't before. The deal was, the problem was it wouldn't, uh, you know, show. It would just be flashing all the arrows here. And these would flash on the side, too, because I also couldn't pick defrost, face, or foot. It was just kind of always stuck on defrost and foot. So I changed that one, and it fixed that. So now I can select it. These arrows on the side have stopped flashing, but these arrows still flash, and I can't pick a temperature in between hot and cold. You press cold, it goes all the way over to cold. You press hot, it goes all the way over to hot. All the way on its own. And it's not supposed to go on its own. It's only supposed to go while you're holding it. You know, when you tap it uh, so you can get temperatures in between. But, but for some reason, it's going all the way over on its own. And if you try to, like, hit cold, because usually you can... Well, that's on these, that's on the, when you pick the face, you can, like, if it's all the way at the bottom and then you pick all the way at the head, you hit the bottom again to stop it. If once it's, the arrows will start moving up, you know, you hit up and it'll go dink, 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 dink. And you hit stop when it's like halfway or whatever and the arrow will stop halfway, holding that door halfway. Uh... But this one, you're just, it's only supposed to go for as far as you push it or as long as you hold it. And you'll see they're going to do, 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 But it's going all the way cold and all the way hot on its own. And they're flashing. So I don't know if I put the wrong motor in there or what. But at least now I've got almost, I've got basically full control 
top to bottom, hot and cold, recirculation. So for heating, that's better. At least I got the heating good. The heating's good. I got the radio in. Now I just got to do the speakers in the back because that one back there, that one doesn't even work. It's not even working. That one sounds like it's underwater. So, uh, but first, gotta get the radiator in, I guess. Let's get the radiator in. top heater hose that goes in right underneath this overflow hose I had that disconnected while I was keeping this funnel plugged into the top of the radiator cap there so I was keeping this full of water with the hose while it was just pouring out of the radiator hose uh, until it stopped turning brown I got a lot of it um, but it still kept like coming and going, come, you know, coming and coming. So I threw a bottle of Prestone degreaser. This stuff here with just water. And I don't think you have to do it very long. 12 quarts, two bottles, heavy duty cleaning. 10 minutes so yeah and then like as soon as I put that in the tank I was I grabbed the hose to like flush it to mix it up it was turning pretty dark brown right away so that stuff's going to do its job it's up to temp it's just going to run that through a system in the meantime I'm going to give her a little tune up in the can these do suck in a lot of oil from the valve covers so Whoops, totally just kicked you guys. Sorry.
can see him smoking out the back. I'm going to finish this up, but I think that's going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching me go through all that mess of tearing apart the dash and the back of the Suburban just to find nothing. So, uh... At least I showed you what not to do and what you don't have to do. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Have a good one.